Hey friends, this is Dolany TV. Good morning to you. We now know what the Edmonton Oilers are going to do about those offer sheets from the St. Louis Blues. That being nothing, not a zip. Broberg and Holloway are members of the St. Louis Blues. We'll have more on that in a matter of moments as well as a minor trade that, uh, hey, you know what? At least we got something extra, right? I, I think we can agree on that. But for right now, I want to encourage you to hit that subscribe button here on the channel. Stay tuned. We've got an interesting rest of the summer, interesting fall coming up. That's my quick little pitch to you, but let's get to it right away. The Oilers' statement on Dylan Holloway and Philip Broberg. The Edmonton Oilers announced this morning it will not match contract offers presented by the St. Louis Blues to Dylan Holloway and defenseman Philip Broberg. Today was day seven, the day you had to match. We are just 13 minutes past the time of matching, and they have not. As per NHL compensation guidelines, the Oilers will receive the Blues' second and third round selections in the 2025 NHL draft. So for the Oilers, they end up recouping a little bit of draft capital, at least for this year, where they were down to their sixth and seventh round picks as all that was remaining. Does ultimately a second and a third replace Dylan Holloway? No, but does a third rounder sound better than a fourth rounder to some degree yes plus you have Vishili Pud Colson so maybe not the end of the world scenario that many had envisioned we at least have a roster body now that can compete for an NHL job and we also have a little bit higher of a pick than we did two days ago so again that's where we're at in terms of the right defense and Dylan Holloway or sorry Philip Roberg I would expect to see something there at some point whether it be sooner or later for the Edmonton Oilers because uh, you don't expect to go into the playoffs with Ty Emerson or Troy Stetcher as your fourth defenseman so we'll stay tuned on that front for right now give me a moment here <coughs> oh bless me all right <coughs> Read up, read up, I guess. Well, I'm, I'm sitting here dying of uh, the uh, cat allergies. The final cap numbers, that's where we find ourselves this morning. Uh, with the Oilers not matching Broberg Holloway, they have 949k or 946k projected cap space for 21 healthy and Evander Kane. With no moves, this can fit 4.4 annual cap hit at the deadline. I don't really care about the uh, LTIR usage because I assume at this point that that is the plan to accrue cap space because 4.4 at the deadline. Guys, we're talking about a almost $17.6 million of total cap hit you can absorb at the deadline on double retention. You've got a second and a third now, so there's plenty of things you can do with this uh, with this Edmonton Oilers roster the way it is with some randoms thrown in to chase a cup with Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. That appears to be the way the Oilers are going. Mark Spector speculating on that today as well. And as we see here, the St. Louis Blues kind of felt bad for us in this whole shenanigans as well to some extent. The Oilers and Blues also complete a separate trade. St. Louis is sending its 2028 third round pick and unsigned 2023 fifth round draft selection Paul Fisher who if you were looking in the thumbnail, you were wondering who that Team USA kid is, that would be Paul Fisher for future considerations from Edmonton. So David Pagnota right there with the notification on that one. Again, Paul Fisher, left-hand D, kind of 19 years old. He's over in the Big Ten right now in the NCAA. I wouldn't worry too much about him. He's just out of anything right now. I'd say a trade chip or a player that you could very well sign in a couple years from now and maybe have an impact three four years down the road when you're talking about that 2028 nhl entry draft so really not much to get excited about there although for the oilers it is another body in the system again if you're talking about bodies in bodies out the oilers are at least at a bare minimum maintaining that yes you got emerson but that was for one uh Cody Cece, so now you got a body for Philip Broberg in the system to at least maintain overall headcount. Now this was uh, this was um, do do do. No, that's the wrong one. Let's go here. Sorry, 
My bad, I was like, I don't recognize making that graphic this morning. Like I said, it's also 747, guys. Apologies, right? Now you see what we're dealing with every day. Uh, interesting, Fisher was a fifth round pick in 2023. Left shot D-man is 19 and playing at Notre Dame in the Big Ten. So the Oilers gain another prospect and pick from the Blues not to match. So again, overall, I guess future considerations, yeah, the Oilers might send like a seventh round pick in 2020. 82 whatever the heck you want to say but uh for the oilers it's another prospect it's a third round pick so you get two thirds a second and a former fifth round pick in total for philip broberg and dylan holloway is that good enough i don't think so but at the end of the day is it the cap situation the blues put you in is it the cap situation you put yourself in is it the way the oilers decide to go that matters more than losing Holloway and Broberg. I think truly it is because you look at this situation right now and how it all boils down. You just lost two former top 15 picks that were about to come onto the scene and blow the doors off for the Edmonton Oilers given the playing time that we assumed they were going to get. But instead, for the Oilers, you end up getting a prospect that'll take a couple of years. You get a second and a third and another third that's down the line to hopefully one day sometime this season add a piece that is impactful in that top 4D and really change the direction of where this franchise is going in the playoffs this season, right? I think the Oilers, no matter what, whether you keep Broberg and CeCe or not, you make the playoffs just simply because goaltending is going to be good enough and so too is the offense this year. But losing both Broberg and CeCe in the playoffs is a massive hit. I know there were stats about CeCe not being on the ice for a single penalty kill goal against all playoffs long. There's stats he was 18 of something throughout the play, uh, throughout the regular season. So, again, it's a tough loss for the Oilers, but end of the day is you got to make some business decisions that you don't really like, and uh, this is what the Oilers have chose to do, and we'll be interested kind of see how this all plays out over the next several months here in Edmonton as we get towards the NHL trade deadline. Still seems very early to be talking about the trade deadline now that we're in August and we got September, October, November, December, January, February, March. We're about, I guess you could say, six, six and a half months away from the NHL trade deadline and we're already looking forward to it because of what it potentially could mean for the Edmonton Oilers now that they've recouped the assets from the offer sheets for Philip Broberg and Dylan Holloway. Friends, thanks so much for being aboard here this afternoon, this morning. Whenever you get a chance to tune in, really appreciate it. Like I said off the top, consider hitting that subscribe button. If I'm already talking about the trade deadline now, you can only imagine how much more news we have to come your way here over the next six, seven months as we get towards finalizing who the Edmonton Oilers will be in the 2025 Stanley Cup playoffs. For right now, though, I'm up on out of here. Thanks for being aboard. We'll catch you later.